Welcome to another episode of Geopolitics with Alex. Today we're going to deal with President Macron's visit to Beijing last week. It was a scene that I was a little bit reluctant to tackle early on. I wanted the dust to settle a little bit and give it some thought and reflection. Uh, and uh, sure enough, uh, I've given it some time and, and, and here are my two cents. Uh, this lecture is called uh, The Good, the Bad and the Ugly of Emmanuel Macron's visit to Beijing. Uh, and by way of introduction, of course, I should say that this is all about a three-day visit which the President of France uh, conducted last week in Beijing with a big uh, French business delegation and actually partially together uh, with the Commission President uh, Ursula von der Leyen. The visit itself didn't cause an uproar, but there was an interview that President Macron uh, gave afterwards uh, on the flight back from Beijing to Paris uh, to actually two media outlets, one in English, uh, Politico, and the other one in French, uh, Les Echos. Uh, uh, and uh, I had the opportunity to read both, one in French, the other one uh, in English. Actually, slight discrepancies uh, in them. Uh, and in many ways, I want today to raise some issues linked to the visit and Macron's general approach uh, to international relations and uh, to geopolitics. I think some of it is good, uh, some of it is bad, and <laughs> as I said, some of it a little bit ugly as well. So I'm trying to analyze it uh, you know, objectively uh, as, as far as I can. So the three points today then, uh, the first one is the good, the second one is the bad, and the third one is the ugly, before uh, I conclude uh, on the implications of, of this visit. Now first, to kick off with the good. I think it's very important that European and especially Western leaders uh, visit Beijing and have conversations with uh, President Xi Jinping. It's important to keep diplomacy alive. I also believe and uh, fall into the category of people who don't like uh, decoupling with uh, China. I think the rhetoric that we're seeing coming from the United States, pretty much across the aisle from some, is sometimes a little bit too aggressive uh, on China. I fully understand the problems related uh, to the two superpowers, China and the United States, battling it off, not necessarily for world dominance, but at least competing uh, for space um, in this new world order. But I still believe it's better to talk than, than uh, not to talk. I also think it was good that uh, President Macron uh, traveled there originally together with Ursula von der Leyen, the President of the European Commission. So. In essence, you could say that the aim was that here we're trying to portray uh, a common uh, European view. I also think it's actually quite good to have a business delegation. Again, it comes to my thesis of not decoupling and, and thinking that interdependence is good. Of course, you have to be strategic in your thinking. You have to you know, think where can you do business, where can you uh, not. So uh, there are a lot of good elements. And the final one is, is basically if and when Macron, in his conversations with Xi Jinping, said, listen, you are the person who can really influence Vladimir Putin to end this war. Can you try to do something uh, about it? Can you talk sense to him? So a lot of good and positive aspects, I think, that we should take home uh, from the visit. However, point number two, it did turn out to at least look uh, quite bad. And unfortunately, sometimes you know, uh, perception uh, is what matters. Now, the first thing that looked bad was that Ursula von der Leyen was actually sidelined from the meeting. She had gone in with a strong message uh, saying that, you know, we need to have uh, a value-based approach and a common European uh, approach uh, to China. She used quite tough language and really in many ways was expressing uh, the European uh, view. Uh, but she was only in the meeting room, according to media reports, for one hour, whereas Macron spent the better part of six hours with the Chinese president. Uh, now, of course, I guess you can't blame Macron for that. You know, it's the Chinese host that wanted to make it look like that. 
and they certainly uh, succeeded. The second mistake I think he did, which made things look bad, uh, were the hyped up videos. I fully understand that we live in a world of social media and everything kind of needs to look cool and suave and so on. But, you know, the French president visiting the Chinese president, you know, it's not supposed to be rock and roll. It's supposed to be, uh, you know, down to earth diplomacy and conversation. Uh, and, uh, you know, the social media uh, videos that were put out, I think, looked a little bit uh, over the top. And that does give uh, an, 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 a perception. The third thing that made things look bad was the timing. Because, of, the, of course, the situation with Taiwan and China is very tense uh, at the moment. So it was easy to create a perception that, you know, here is the French president doing business with uh, Xi Jinping while you know, the Taiwanese are in a very uh, tense uh, situation. And then actually came the interview, which was a little bit a nail in the coffin or the thing that, you know, made the visit look bad on steroids. So what did he say? Um, you know, uh, on Taiwan, he said, I quote, we should not get caught up in a crisis that is not ours, which prevents it from building its strategic autonomy was kind of the message there. And, uh, you know, the Taiwan issue is as much ours as Ukraine is. So in that sense, you can't, you know, detach yourself from it. So a lot of the commentators said that, you know, this was a tone-deaf approach. It was ill-timed in many ways. Uh, and, and then he repeated when he went on the defensive and said, well, we haven't changed our approach on Taiwan. When he visited the Netherlands a couple of days later, he repeated and said, being an ally does not mean being a vassal state. Now, the problem here, of course, is that that's the language that Putin uses. It says Europe is the vassal, vassal state or vassal of, of, of uh, uh, the United States. Now, I think his comments fall into the same category of mistakes that President Macron had done previously. Uh, a year, year and a half back, he talked about NATO being brain dead. And in the middle of the war, before it, he tried to mediate, but then he said that Putin should not lose face, we should not humiliate Russia and Putin. So, you know, this then combined with what he has now said on China just simply doesn't leave a, a good impression. And of course, the reactions were according. You, you got them from the United States, and understandably so. You know, the United States is spending 30 times the amount that France is spending on the defense of, of, of uh, Ukraine. And basically, he's saying that we shouldn't help the Americans out on Taiwan, but the Americans should help us out on Ukraine. And this is not exactly a good message. And of course, there were very strong reactions coming from Central and Eastern uh, Europe as well. I think the basic problem here is that he's actually driving French interests, not European values. He's driving the French line, not the European uh, common line. So I think to sum it up, the bad thing with the visit and the interview was not about what he said, but about who said it, in other words, Macron, and when it was, was said. So had this come from a professor like me, fine, you know, give some analysis. But when it comes from one of the top leaders in the world, who I have a lot of respect for in the form of Emmanuel Macron, I think it became problematic. And here's where I come to my third point. Why was it eventually so ugly? Now, the first reason is that I think it undermined Taiwan's security. Uh, so Taiwan is, an, is in a very difficult situation, trying to balance uh, geopolitics, obviously, with China, trying to balance um, its security between China and the United States. And this undermined Taiwan's position and situation uh, in many ways. Second, it undermined European unity. And this worries me a lot uh, as a, a European. I'll come back to the notion of strategic autonomy in a second.
But strategic autonomy does not mean the strategic autonomy of France. It should mean the strategic autonomy of the European Union to act. And here we had the French president basically speaking in his own name using Europe and had not cleared it with any other uh, leader. Number three, it infuriated the United States. This was the first time when we see a clear uh, wedge uh, in the unity of the West uh, against Ukraine. It wasn't necessary to do that. He shouldn't have done it. Uh, of course, now you can't sort of undo what was said. Uh, the fourth thing that made it look ugly was that it played into the hands of President Xi Jinping. I mean, he was smiling and for a reason. This is exactly what he wanted. He wanted the French president to undermine uh, American leadership in the global West, and he wanted the president of the European Commission to look bad. And I'm afraid with Macron's comments, she got what is wanted. And the fifth reason I think this looked ugly was that he used the playbook of Putin and he used the term that Putin has used about the West, that Europe is the vassal of the United States. I actually think Russia is the vassal state of China, but that's beside the point. So there were many reasons, I think, that this turned out to be uh, ugly. So let me conclude by then saying the positives and the negatives. Three positives. One, the visit and the dialogue itself, very important. Two, Ursula von der Leyen was there with him, and I hope lessons will be learned for the next time around. And three, it shows European engagement uh, in the issue. On the negative side, I think this was an example of French Gaulism. And I think the president of France needs to understand that France is not a balancing power in this big game. It is part of a team, and that team is called the European Union and the West. And I think it's important for French foreign policy to reflect that. I have no problems with France taking the lead, but that can't be a solo lead. It has to be a lead together with the likes of Germany, the European Commission, and of course with uh, communication and cooperation uh, with the United Kingdom and the United States. The second negative from it is that if President Macron wanted to drive strategic autonomy. This is an example of how not to do it. First, there needs to be strategic unity. Only after that can we have strategic autonomy. Otherwise, it becomes strategic cacophony and strategic nonsense. So if he wanted to drive the term and the concept, I think he failed. Uh, the final negative is that I think this is the third colossal mistake that President Macron has made in trying to drive European foreign policy. The first one was to call NATO brain dead. It is not. It is very necessary for the security of Europe. The second one uh, was basically to talk about the fa uh, saving of face and the non-humiliation of Putin. This undermines the unity of the West and the endeavors of Ukraine, Western and Central Europe included. And now third, uh, he undermined the collective security of Europe uh, by putting a wedge in the relations that we have with the United States. So I hope that we all learn from our mistakes uh, and the next time around we try to find a little bit more uh, unity. Here are my takes on uh, President Macron's visit to uh, Beijing. The good, the bad and the ugly. Let's continue the conversation, keep your comments coming up, and please follow us on YouTube. Thanks for listening and watching. America made its declaration of independence for the world.